figure. I'm, I'm starving to death right before your eyes. Well, he should be here any minute. I'll get the salad ready. Can I help you, Aunt Natalie? Oh, thank you, darling. Everything's almost ready. Hi. Hi, Papa. Oh, hello. Hello, darling. Hello, Nat. Anything wrong? Oh, no, everything's fine. I just had the worst day of my life. What happened? Well, you remember last week when the students rioted up at Hudson College and they pulled down the statue of the founder and put a pair of panties on him? I remember. It was a case of spring fever. Spring fever, my foot. That was juvenile delinquency. Well, I wrote an editorial about it on Monday. Yesterday, some smart aleck sent in a letter to the editor. He signed it Rebel, and among other things, he accused me of having the, the mentality of a dinosaur. Martin, you've been a newspaper man all your life. You're not gonna let one letter bother you. Well, I wish it were one letter. Mail has been pouring in all day from the kids, and most of it supports Rebel. We haven't had that much mail on an editorial in years. A little while ago, Smathers called me into his office and asked me what I was gonna do about it. I look like an idiot. Darling, tomorrow this will be yesterday's newspaper. Well, I may not last until tomorrow. Come on into the kitchen, talk to me while I finish dinner. I'm not very hungry. You know something, Cap? I've never seen Papa so upset. You think he's upset? I'm rebel. <laughs> Live post everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe. And Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. How could you do a thing like that, Kathy? You're always old, solid, four feet on the ground. Patty, I had no idea your father wrote that editorial. It wasn't signed. I didn't agree with what it said, so I wrote to the letters to the editor column. And started a whole international incident. Oh, brother. Patty, what am I going to do? That's a switch. You in trouble and asking me for advice? Will you stop gloating? <laughs> I can't help it, Kathy. It's very funny. Well, it's not funny to me. If your father finds out that I wrote that letter, he'll be furious. Okay. Okay, Kath Coolin. I'll put the little old gray cells to work. Now, let's analyze the facts. Fact one, Popo's in hot water at the newspaper office. Fact two, you put him there. Patty. Sorry about that. Look, Kathy, there's really no problem. If Papa finds out you wrote that letter, you're in trouble. But he's never going to find out. Yes, he is. How? I'm going to tell him. You flipped. No, I haven't, Patty. The only way to handle this is to be honest and direct. Do you want my advice? Be sneaky and keep it undercover. Kathy, you heard what Mamo said. By tomorrow, this whole thing will be yesterday's news. If I don't tell him, I'd be dishonest. Oh, if you do tell him, you're a nut. Will you listen to an expert? What makes you an expert? Well, do you know anyone who gets into trouble more often than I do? No. <laughs> Mr. Editor is at war. If you go down there now, you'll be shot down in flames. I'm sorry, Patty. I have no choice. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if she's really related to me. There. Here's tomorrow's editorial. There has been a great deal of mail in support of the letters signed Rebel. Now, most of the letters generate a lot of heat, but very little light. This writer is not opposed to freedom for teenagers if it is coupled with responsibility. But being a teenager does not automatically confer a license to behave badly. Um, 
Rebel should pull his head out of the sand and take a good hard look at what's happening around him. A rebel called this writer a dinosaur. Perhaps it's Rebel who is living in the Stone Age. You might call him a Neanderthal ostrich. How do you like it? That should do it. What do you think, Kat? Yes, that should do it all right. Uh, did you want to see me? Uh, no, it can wait, Uncle Martin. Huh. He called me a Neanderthal ostrich. <laughs> so? You called him a dinosaur. Well, I didn't know who I was calling names. Neither does he. <laughs> you know, it's wild. You two love each other, and you're slinging mud at each other like crazy. Here, you've paint on your nose. You know, this would make a great Doris Day Cary Grant picture. Patty. No, really. Cary Grant is the editor of this newspaper, and he's running a campaign against uh, a female politician. And Doris Day is a female politician. Yeah, she's, uh, the mayor of this town she comes from. And Carrie doesn't know that. Right. Patty, I am not Doris Day. How am I going to get out of this? Just leave it to your brainy cousin. Oh, come on, Kathy, relax. Let's call the boys and tell them we'll meet them at the shake shop. I wonder how you get in touch with Carrie Grant. <laughs> oh, hi, Carmine. Yeah, I saw it. Hi, Rich. Hi, Chad. Hi, Patty. Have you read your father's paper lately? Richard, it isn't my father's paper. He's just the editor. Yeah, well, you ought to get rid of that dinosaur who's been writing all those editorials. Rebel should sure tell him off. Mm. Your father should put a younger man in there. He's someone who understands kids. Well, maybe you should give the job to Rebel. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, we're all sending letters to the editor. Your what? How's this for an opening? Dear Fossil. Why don't you go back to the La Brea tar pits where they dug you up? <laughs> I like mine better. Dear sir, would you please give me your space travel formula? I'd like to visit you in the 18th century. That ought to needle him. I think you're shooting arrows at a very thin hide. Oh, listen to this. Dear old fashioned, I can just see you sitting in your rocking chair with a shawl around your neck, writing editorials with a quill pen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, fellas, do you really think you should send those letters? I mean, why don't you wait and let the whole thing blow over, huh? Blow over? Listen, we've been attacked. If we don't defend ourselves, who will? Oh, no, I'd like to go out and lynch the guy who wrote that editorial. Oh, no, we're mailing these letters. What do you have? <sighs> Two king-sized aspirin. It's more mail, Mr. Lane. Where would you like me to put it? Never mind where I'd like you to put it. Just set it on the desk. Oh, brother. More uh, fan mail? Yeah. That's quite a collection. 17th century Sam. Old fogey. Mossback. <laughs> Daniel Boone. <laughs> Dinosaur. Dinosaur. That seems to be the most popular one. You know something, Martin? Since this thing started, our circulation is shut up. So is my blood pressure. Well, you're not taking this personally, are you? Well, wouldn't you if you woke up one morning and found you were a symbol of the Stone Age? Well, the newspaper is supposed to be a forum for the people. A forum? They've turned it into a battleground. <laughs> and you know, we're in a trap. The more of these letters that we print, the more we receive. And if we don't print, them, they accuse us of censorship. You know what I think you should do, Martin? Ask Rebel to step forward and identify himself. After all, he's the one who started this whole thing. The two of you should meet face to face, talk over your problems. That way you can reach some sort of an agreement and uh, issue a mutual statement. You know, I think that's a pretty good idea. All right, go to it. Oh, I think you're getting a poison pen letter from my son. He's 16. <laughs> you rebel. It's time you came forward and identified yourself so that we can meet face to face and discuss our differences. Please telephone letters to the editor at the Chronicle or let us know where we can reach you. Sincerely, Dinosaur. Oh, no. Boy, talk about your own backyard. Why don't I join Father in Iceland? Oh, what are you worried about, Kath? You've got me for a cousin. That's what I'm worried about. Well, you're not very grateful. 
Patty, I really don't have very much to be grateful for. Single-handedly, I'm destroying a whole uncle. I wonder why he wants to meet me. Well, he doesn't want to meet you. He wants to meet Rebel. Well, it's the same thing. There's one thing I'm certain of. I'm not going to answer this. I hope he doesn't put the FBI on your tracks. Poor Uncle Martin. He's got a viper in his bosom. <laughs> like Chinese uh, emperor and empress. And then they... Where were you? I was beginning to worry about you. I had a letter to write to Father. What kind of letter? Just a letter. We'll talk about it later. No, I want to discuss it now, Kathy. You didn't write to your father and tell him you were going to join him in Iceland. Yes, Patty, I'm afraid I did. I can't live in your house under false pretenses, Patty. Kathy, what happened wasn't your fault. Things just snowballed into a disaster. Well, you didn't mail the letter, did you? Oh. All right, class. This morning, we're going to study the geologic formation of Iceland. <laughs> oh, there you are. No wonder you wanted to run away from home. What are you talking about? Why didn't you discuss it with me before you did it? Before I did what? Kathy, you don't have to play innocent with me. Look, if you didn't want to tell Papa that you were a rebel, I can understand that. But why did you have to slap him in the face? What? Your letter is in this afternoon's edition. Congratulations. Dear Stone Ager, I would be glad to have a face-to-face -face meeting with you after you publicly apologize for criticizing us teenagers. We get enough of it at home without having old fogies like you on our backs. Signed, Rebel. That's really hitting below the belt. Hitting below the... Patty, you don't think I wrote that? Well, it's signed, Rebel. Patty, I've created a Frankenstein. <laughs> then if you didn't write that letter, that's the greatest thing that could ever happen to us. What are you talking about? Your trouble's over, that's what I'm talking about. Kathy, all we have to do is track down Rebel and hand him or her over to Papa on a silver platter. There's no way you could find him. Nothing is impossible to a genius. All right, Patty, even if you did find him, I couldn't let you do that. Why not? Because it wouldn't be honest. I sent the first letter. Who'd know? I'd know. Thank you anyway, Patty. <laughs> All right, I'll do it without her. She'd hate living in Iceland. <laughs> Hello, Bobby. Hi, this is Patty. Has the bugle gone to press yet? Oh, good. I have an editorial I want you to run on the first page, and I want a copy of it delivered to every high school in the city. You ready? It reads, Dear Rebel, you're the greatest. We teenagers need a fearless leader. Aren't you going to play golf today, dear? No, I'm not in the mood. You know, I finally figured out who Rebel is. You did? You did? Yeah. It's some bitter juvenile delinquent who's got a sour grapes attitude toward everything. Probably a high school dropout. Martin, you haven't touched your breakfast. No, I'm not really hungry. Gee, Dad, are you going to let some stupid kid get your goat? Well, it's not a question of some stupid kid getting my goat. I offered to meet with him and discuss this problem. Well, now, that was a fair and reasonable request. In return, I got a rude, unreasonable answer. I'd like to get my hands on him. I have a feeling you're going to. What makes you think that? Just one of my wild hunches. Patty, do you really know anything about this? Uncle Martin, I... You mean, do I know who wrote to that letter the other day, signed Rebel? No, I have no idea, Papa. But I'm going to try and find out. Is Mr. Smathers still upset? Oh, he's delighted. Circulation is zooming. But then he's not the target for tonight. Stone Ager. It has been difficult for you, hasn't it, Uncle Martin? It's not fair. I think, Uncle Martin, that you should know that 
The real rebel is... Is an idiot who talks too much. I mean, that's why he keeps writing those letters all the time, isn't it? Why isn't he willing to meet Dad? Oh, I have a hunch he's going to. Uncle Martin, he's not the one who's responsible. I'm... You're absolutely right, Kathy. Uh, I think it's the parents who are to blame for that kind of thing. Well, we better go. Kathy's gonna have her head examined. Huh? Uh, Kathy's gonna have her hair done. Come on, Kathy. Patty, let's go. Excuse me. You first. Keep fighting, Papa. Everything will be all right. Bye, Mom. What would you like for dinner tonight, dear? Saber-toothed tiger? You better hurry up, Kath. It's almost eight, and the, and the game starts at eight. You know how Ted hates to be kept waiting. I thought you and Richard were going with us. Oh, we'll meet you there. Rich called to say you'd be a little late. Oh, well, why don't we wait until he gets here, and we'll all go together? No, uh... That's okay. Oh, we'll see you there. But you're awfully anxious to get rid of me. Who? Me? I was only trying to see that you'd have a little time alone with Ted. Oh. All right. Have I forgotten anything? No. Good night. See you at the game. Yeah. I'll save some seats for us. Troubles are over. Would you mind putting that in writing? It is in writing. What's that? That's the trap that's going to catch Rebel. Well, that's your school paper. Uh huh. Right down the front page. Dear Rebel, you're the greatest. We teenagers need an intelligent, fearless leader like you. We're holding a mass meeting at number eight Remsen Street. That's this address. That's right. Tonight at eight o'clock. We're having a mass meeting here. Uh huh. And you know who the mass is? We three. When he reads that, he's going to come flying over here, and we've got him cold. What makes you think he's going to read this? Oh, he'll read it. I had a copy sent to every high school in the city. Well, supposing he does read it, why should he come over here? Because, Papo, he's got an ego a mile high. I analyzed him from the letter he wrote. He's conceited, rude, and cocky. He's a tyrant who's used to walking all over everybody. I figure he's tall, dark, maybe handsome in a Latin sort of way. And he's got dozens of girlfriends, but he doesn't care about any of them. I don't know about the tall, dark boy with dozens of girlfriends, but you know, Martin, I really think this might work. You see, if he does read this, he just might come over here to take charge. He has no way of knowing it's your address. Oh, that's true. You might have something here, Patty. Of course I have. It's called genius. Who else could find one boy in 1,278,000? It's Richard. He's early. We're going to a basketball game, but not until we catch Rebel. <laughs> What are you going to say to Rebel when he comes? Well, that depends on whether or not you're in the room. Hi, Rich. Hi, Patty. Sorry I'm late. You're not late. I told you to be here at 8.30. I know, but you called a meeting for 8 o'clock. Meeting? Yeah. Tell everybody that Rebel is here. You're Rebel? Yeah. I thought you knew that when you said, uh... You are the greatest. I knew it was your editorial when I saw the address. Well, let's get the meeting started. I don't want to miss the game. Rich, don't go in there. I'm having a nightmare. Hi, Mrs. Lane. Evening, Mr. Lane. Hello, Richard. Hello, Richard. You come here to get in on the kill? The kill? I think we better be going, Rich. Uh, we can't leave now. Nobody's here yet. We're having a little meeting here tonight. Oh, well, that's a coincidence. So are we. Yeah? Well, I hope your meeting is as exciting as ours. I'm sure it will be. I'm looking forward to it very much. So am I. Uh, Rich, you know, if there's anything I hate, it's walking in on the middle of a basketball game. Please, let's go. Uh, I don't understand you, Patty. You write a whole editorial asking me to come here to this meeting, and as soon as I get here, you try and rush me out. Patty wrote a whole editorial asking you to come to this meeting? Yeah. My peers are looking for a leader. And we were expecting a tall, dark Latin. Sit down, Rebel. Patty told you about that, huh? Not exactly. We guessed. 
I felt funny about it at first. I mean, because it's your newspaper and everything. Oh, don't give it a thought. Then I said to myself, I'm really doing Mr. Lane a favor. The guy who wrote those editorials ought to be fired. You mean the Stone Ager? Yeah. I'll bet that line really rocked him, huh? Didn't it? Richard, please. Don't interrupt your leader, dear. <laughs> What's he like? About 75 years old with a white beard and a face like a hatchet. No, actually, he's reasonably young and reasonably attractive. He's handsome. Thank you, Natalie. Stone Ager is also usually a very pleasant fellow. But when he gets angry, he has a terrible temper. And Richard, he's angry. You're... Mm. No offense, Mr. Stone Ager. Uh, Mr. Lane, I mean, uh, I didn't know it was your editorial. Uh, I mean, uh... Patty is absolutely right. If there's anything I hate, it's being late for a basketball game. Have a nice meeting. Good night. Rebel. <laughs> that face-to-face -face meeting that you came here for is about to begin. Patty, what have you done? How did I know you were going to use the name Rebel? This is going to hurt you a lot worse than it's going to hurt me, Richard. Yes, sir. Kathy, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be at the basketball game. Ted told me about the trap you set up to catch Rebel. Did you catch him? We caught him. You mean Richard is... I wish I were in bed with a broken back. Don't rush things. <laughs> Uncle Martin. Kathy, I'm Rebel. Good grief. I'm the original Rebel. Uncle Martin, I had no idea you wrote that editorial about juvenile delinquents. I thought what the college kids did with that statue was rather funny. I didn't really see anything malicious in it. I thought they were just letting off a little steam. So I wrote the letter to the editor. Kathy, why don't you tell me about this before? I wouldn't let her. I'm a coward. Uncle Martin, I'm very sorry about this. I, I had no idea it would cause so much trouble. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have, except all the kids agreed with Kathy. Richard. Well, he's right, Patty. I am? Almost every letter we got was on Kathy's side. What does that mean? It means it's time that the Stone Agers and the Teenagers sat down and talked things over. That's a good idea, Mr. Stone Ager. <laughs> Mr. Lane. Oh, just sit down, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kath. Well, everything worked out fine, didn't it? I told you it would have. What's the matter? Papa forgave you, Kathy. And he's even decided to let a high school editor to take over the column once a month. You've struck a blow for all of us. You know, one day they may erect a statue of you in the park. Well, I'm afraid I won't be around to see it. Why not? In that letter I wrote to Father, I told him what I had done, and I didn't think I should stay here. Oh, yeah, but that's all changed now. I know, but when he gets the letter, I'm sure he'll want me to leave. And I asked him for a plane ticket. Oh, Kathy, you can't leave. We're the greatest team since Barnum and Bailey. I mean, together, we can solve the problems of the world. We'll phone them. Do they have phones in Iceland? <sighs> I don't know. I think that's Kathy's. Thank you. What is it, Patty? Iceland. It's addressed to your father. Kathy? It's been returned. You know what happened? The mathematical genius goofed. The letters were returned for insufficient postage. Oh, Patty. Come on. Where are we going? We're going to pick out a site for your statue. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike. 
They walk alike at times, they even talk alike. You can lose. 